We're back at the naturopath. I'm back again on this channel and I'm still talking about omega-3 fish oils. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to talk about rheumatoid arthritis. So if you found this video and you've got RA rheumatoid arthritis, it might pay for you to watch all the way through because there are lots of little tricks and tips you can learn regarding RA. I could create a whole channel on rheumatoid arthritis alone. It's such an incredibly complex condition and there are many different ways you can look at treating this condition but one thing's for sure people with this condition generally suffer with a lot of pain and stiffness it's a terrible disease to have but is my microphone on yes it's on good so the question is <clears throat> how much omega-3 do i need to take to support rheumatoid arthritis <clears throat> so you know a bit of water there's plenty of research now to validate the use of omega-3 with rheumatoid arthritis. So what omega-3 does, it works a little bit like a non-steroidal drug does. All right? So you've got two main classes, several classes of pain relieving medications, but you've got NSAIDs and you've got the steroidals. And then of course you've got other drugs which you know are stronger in the different classes. So the NSAID drugs, you know, inc include things like aspirin, paracetamol, you know, Tylenol, paracetamol, ibuprofen, <clears throat> naproxen. I mean, there are so many of them and they're used for arthritic pain, period pain, headache pain, back pain, any kind of pain. So this is a huge, big cash cow for big pharma. The drug companies love people having pain because they're going to keep buying pain pills all the time. Now, rheumatoid arthritis is a bit different. The pain can be so severe that you need much more powerful drugs than that. I've known rheumatoid arthritis to take, you know, even chemotherapy type drugs, like seriously powerful medications to try and reduce the pain. But what the fish oil does is it works on the same pathway that NSAID drugs work. Okay, so it inhibits inflammatory components in your body. I'll read this out to you, see if it makes any sense to you. Supplementing with fish oil is known to inhibit inflammatory cytokines, TNF-alpha and interleukin-1 beta. So these are basically, these are basically chemicals made by your immune system to increase or upregulate inflammation, right? So we've got other types of chemicals involved here too. So, but the, the long-term use of long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, EPA and DHA found in fish oil, will work on reducing, slowly work and work and work and work on reducing the inflammation and the pain. RA is a bit different from most forms of arthritis in that it's not going to really go away quickly. You're going to have it for life. You need to mediate the pain and learn to sort of cope and live, you know, and have strategies around that. So if we're looking at osteoarthritis, I usually recommend a dose of no more than two to 3,000 milligrams per day uh, because studies have shown taking higher doses is of no advantage at all in OA or osteoarthritis. However, in RA, rheumatoid arthritis, it is an advantage. But the challenge with RA patients, I find, is particularly if they're my age, like 60, they're going to be taking handfuls of medications, all sorts of drugs to cope with the pain, with maybe even, even the the emotions that they're feeling, you know, with RA, because it's it really can ruin your life. So the thing with RA is you need to look at it from multiple facets. It's not just what goes in here, what can I take to reduce your pain? It's also what you eat, it's how you're living, it's your lifestyle, it's your stress levels. One of the most important things regarding RA, and I'll come back to the dosages in a minute, don't worry. There's a good couple of good tips I want to give you guys out there. If you've got this condition, I always recommend a comprehensive stool test with rheumatoid arthritis. Now, some people will be sitting there scratching their head thinking, this guy's losing it. He's really off his rocker. He's talking about my bowel when the problem is in my joints. Yeah, but hang on a minute. Haven't we said before in previous videos that the bulk of your immune system is actually in your small intestine, in your digestive system? Doesn't it pay to do a bit of an analysis on the microbiota, the bugs you've got in your gut to see if the balance is healthy, to see if we haven't got any bacteria that are potentially producing large amounts or stimulating the immune system to produce large amounts of inflammation. Have you ever thought about that? When I look at old medical books from the 20s and 30s, 1920s, 
not you know 2020 1920s old uh, English medical textbooks on rheumatology for example and diseases they talk about always look for the hidden infection with rheumatoid arthritis now no doctor talks about that today but I often with patients when I was practicing we do comprehensive stool tests and I'm in almost every single case I found there was a problem in the gut and sometimes the problem was huge. The person had a huge yeast problem in their gut or they had Klebsiella, a starch loving bacteria, like very, very high amounts. So getting the gut in a good shape is one of the most important things you can do with autoimmune disease. Now don't believe me. You don't have to believe me. You don't believe what I say. Go on the internet, talk to experts. It's true. Working on the gut is one of the best things you can do with any autoimmune condition because it's going to help to balance your immune system. It's going to downregulate inflammation. So that's point one. Try and get a comprehensive stool analysis. And the best lab, in my opinion, is Doctors Data. So Doctors, D O C T O R S, and Data, D A T A. So just type that into Google, Doctors Data Laboratory or Labs and up it comes and there you'll find stool tests but the trick is to find a physician that can work with you you know help you with the test and interpret it for you so a naturopathic doctor will be probably a good choice in my opinion um, I honestly believe if you forego a, a comprehensive stool test when you've got RA you're really really missing out big time and I don't like to see patients miss out the low inflammatory diet look on this channel Look on the naturopath, Eric Baker naturopath channel. On this channel, you'll find videos on low inflammatory foods. Those are the foods you want to be eating. Okay, more fish in the diet. Maybe some more chicken in the diet. You take out all pork, all beef, red meats you take out. Takeaway food, processed foods, all need to go. If you really want to get a good result with RA, you need to look at changing what goes in here, which changes the expression in the gut and also your bacteria will then start changing for the better inflammation will slowly start coming down medications will be starting to be reduced i've seen it many times it can be you too but you need to work on a system the stool test getting the gut balanced again looking at the proper ways of eating trying to understand that sleep is fundamental uh, and stress in your life is very, very contraindicated for autoimmune. It only makes it worse, all right? Omega-3 dosages, now we're coming back to the beginning again. I like you to take between four to 6,000 milligrams per day. Okay, now that may, may, may seem like a crazy amount, but it is not with autoimmune disease, all right? <clears throat> I'm gonna re read this out now, my script. I've certainly seen and witnessed many patients reporting improvements, including some very significant improvements in pain reductions, improved mobility of their hands, neck and back after taking high dose omega-3 religiously for one or more years. Some will notice improvements very rapidly in a few months, but in my honest opinion, it takes 12 to 18 months before major breakthroughs uh, will be experienced. Uh -huh. Um, 6,000 milligrams a day, I'm looking at a dosage that's quite high. So you'll take two capsules with breakfast, you'll take two capsules with lunch and two with dinner. Now it may seem like a stupid amount, but believe me, it really does work with RA. The second point I'd like you to look at in terms of what to take for you know, efficacy of inflammatory reductions would be ginger powder um, and or turmeric powder. Turmeric is the yellow powder that can be mixed Sometimes you do a bit of coconut oil or put in a smoothie. The turmeric has also very powerful um, ability to reduce the inflammatory mediators, the prostaglandins, for example. It's being linked with that. Improves liver function, cleans, purifies the blood, has a big effect on reducing inflammation. So turmeric and ginger, more fresh ginger and more powdered ginger. Don't forget. And the last one. Uh, I'll leave you with for this video because it's already gone on nearly 10 minutes now. You've probably already clicked off by now anyway. Would be digestive enzymes. So if you're a lady out there, for example, who's had a gallbladder out, who's got rheumatoid arthritis, you need digestive enzymes. At the very minimum, you need lipases or fat busting enzymes. But a good overall broad spectrum digestive enzyme and probiotic is a very smart move for autoimmune disease like RA. Give me some questions in the comment section. Thanks for tuning in.